Good morning, good morning, everyone. Accompanying uh, me uh, this weekend, well, you know I'm getting ready to head to San Francisco in about an hour. Um, accompanying me this weekend to San Francisco is a delegation of approximately 50 representatives uh, from the Mayor's Office of Special Events and several city departments, as well as the Houston Super Bowl Host Committee, Houston First, and local business leaders. Uh, many of them are already on the ground in California, uh, laying the groundwork. We're going to watch, listen, and learn. We know we have to be prepared because all eyes will be on Houston in 2017, and we're all very much excited. Uh, we've hosted events of this magnitude before, so this is not anything new for, for the city of Houston, but we can always learn from others. It will be a fantastic opportunity to reintroduce our great city to the rest of the world, and we want to make a very good impression. Uh, the delegation will be meeting with the NFL, media from around uh, the country, potential sponsors and vendors who are buying to be part of creating the wow factor uh, for the fans' experience that will be part of the Houston Super Bowl 51. A lot has changed in Houston since we hosted our last Super Bowl in, tw in 2004. Uh, we have Discovery Green, the Buffalo Bayou Transformation, Hobby's new International Terminal, redevelopment of Broadway as a scenic gateway to Hobby, improvements at Bush Airport, the new Marriott Marquis that will be happening downtown with uh, Restaurant Row right in front, uh, the expanded Convention Center, um, uh, just a, a great, I mean a lot. We are the most diverse city uh, in the country and this is an excellent opportunity to showcase that diversity. Uh, my overriding message in California will be that everything will be ready and centrally located in 2017 and you haven't seen anything yet until you come to the city of Houston. We want to showcase our southern hospitality and we were all smiling. We're smiling. We are smiling. Our southern hospitality, our cultural diversity, our delicious restaurants, our beautiful downtown, and everything else that makes Houston a forward-thinking destination for business or leisure travel. The city of the future is proud to be hosting the first Super Bowl uh, of the future and we welcome the fans and the rest of the world who will be watching on TV. Um, best bear in mind, uh, Arizona, they cited a $700 million impact from hosting the Super Bowl uh, and the Pro Bowl. New Orleans cited a $400 million impact. The estimated impact to the city of Houston is more than $500 million. Uh, the host committee intends to invest $4 million back into the greater Houston area via grants for education, health and wellness and beautification. So we're heading out to California. We don't intend to stay, but we do intend to come back and welcome everybody, one million plus people, uh, to come to Houston in 2017. And we are ready to take off and get and see what California can do. Having said that, I'm open for any questions um, before I fly out of here. Mayor, how worried are you about the Astrodome? Uh, not, not worried at all. Uh, we have so many great ventures. I mean, the Astrodome is still one of the wonder, wonders of the world, you know. As a kid growing up, it was like what, the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, but when, when you look at what's the, the complex that's out there at, at NRG Stadium, uh, from that stadium all the way to downtown, to all over the city of Houston, um, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that at all. Is it, uh, is, it, is it really necessary to take such a large delegation to this event that may not entirely resemble our event, very, very different cities? Uh, yes. I mean, in part of this delegation, there are, there's, there are police, fire, homeland security, special events, metro, Houston FERS, Great Houston Convention and Visitors Bureau. I mean, when you add all of that up, it's, it's, really, not, it's really not that many people. Will you all actually be going to the game? Uh, will you get tickets to the game? Does the NFL provide that? No, not every. Most of the people that are going will not be getting tickets to the game. Um, and then there's there are some, and there will be. Uh, I think there, uh, some other elected officials will be going, and they're having to pay the cost of their tickets themselves. Is there any particular area that you're going to focus on the most that you hope to, to bring back and implement here in Houston? <laughs> No, I think one of the reasons why the, in, the, in the delegation of, uh, let's say, roughly 50, you, get, you have police and fire and homeland security, 
Uh, all of those elements are critical in terms of putting on an event of this kind, special events in the city of Houston, critical. Um, and no one person or one group can be everywhere. So different groups, different individuals will be all over San Francisco in the area just to see how it's done, um, best practices. Uh, and just Houston just wants to be at the top of its game. This is, this is an opportunity to showcase Houston to more than a million people and to people who are watching from all over the globe. We just want to get it right. Uh, we're trying uh, to diversify our economy beyond where we are right now. This is an excellent opportunity to do that. Um, and we want Houston to be in the top tier of the conversation, that when people are talking about a New York or an L.A. or D.C. or Atlanta, we want them to put Houston in the top of that conversation. Uh, when you have key people, you know, like, let's say, like the Pope, uh, when they're looking at coming to the United States, that they don't just look at uh, New York or Philadelphia or some other entity. We want them to take a look at the city of Houston. And, and really, for many, many people outside of the city of Houston, they do not even know that we are the most diverse city in the country. They don't know that. When you start talking about diversity, they say New York. Well, uh, this delegation, when we go to California, they say Houston, we say diversity. We say cultural richness, 640 square miles. Um, restaurants, hey, you just can't beat us. Uh, and then on top of that, what New York doesn't have or L.A. or any of those other cities, they don't have the southern charm that Houston has. So, uh, uh, so basically, you know, we're going to go and be the ambassadors for the city of Houston. But it's a, for, from my vantage point, uh, it is an economic tool to attract not only people there, but others to come to, to, and businesses to come to the city of Houston and to say, just check us out. And I think you'll come again and again and again. And as we say at some of our churches, you're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome three times. <laughs> Um, for some of the people, they, they're paying for it on their, on their own. For others, um, it'll be paid for, I guess, through the convention, Super Bowl itself. I've got, I've got one more on the Super Bowl question. Um, okay, I was just, I was just yes. wanting to follow up on the transportation okay. conversation earlier when you went to Austin. Um, in terms of ways to implement the sort of multimodal priorities that you talked about publicly. Right. Um, you know, it, do you have any initial thoughts on, um, you know, uh, putting some meat on the bones of the complete streets, um, uh, executive order, um, any ways that the CIP would change, and I any ways that the Rebuild Houston formulas might be shifted to prioritize certain projects differently? Do, do you have any, I, I know you wanted to put a group together, but. Well, you know, the, 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 there's the committee on my transition team. Uh, that's working specifically on that on that area. That's a part of their their charge is to put is to make policy recommendations to me. Um, I know Andy, for example, on, on the economic development team, met with them for a couple hours this week, uh, and then they're going to be submitting their. I have asked them to complete their work by March 1st, so I'm looking forward to getting to getting that. But they are drilling down on traffic and transportation, and their charge has come forth with specific recommendations. One of the recommendations that I know that they will be making is for me to elevate transportation and have a, like a department of transportation, transportation czar, so to speak, uh, that's directly within the mayor's office to reporting to me. Uh, that's one of the uh, recommendations. I think that will be forthcoming, and, and I'll take a look at that. Uh, and then to consolidate, or at least to, to put together a task force where you're bringing all the different groups together. Uh, so we, each person, will, each entity will know what the other is doing. Uh, so those recommendations, I think, are forth, will be forthcoming, and I look forward to getting that. I know um, one report will be coming to me next, by the end of next week, uh, and then I look forward to getting the full report from Traffic and Transportation Committee, from the transition team, uh, no later than March 1. That group you're talking about representing what, or what groups would be represented on that task force? You know, for example, Metro, certainly. Uh, Public Works from the city of Houston, definitely. Um, uh, even dealing with, um, we've got representatives from city council, for example, on Transportation Policy Council. Uh, I still want to factor in representatives from TxDOT because they, they need to be a part of that group. Um, 
I think there are, there are a number of them. Andy, you, I know you're back there. Can you think? Yeah. So all of the entities that have some impact on transportation, we need to be sitting at the table working collaboratively to come up with a, some effective strategies to, to deal with transportation, traffic and transportation, within the 640 square miles, but recognizing it's more, it's regional as well. I think the key for, for, for the city of Houston is making sure that when we are attracting dollars, let's say from tech stock or federal dollars, that those dollars come into the last mile, come inside the city of Houston, and not just operating on the periphery. May I have another non-Super Bowl question? Um, the Texas Organizing Project talked to all the press conferences. So who again? The Texas Organizing Project. Um, whether are calling on the city to stop uh, tax subsidies for corporations in Houston. Uh, I'm assuming uh, 380 agreement style. Um, and so I'm just wondering about your thoughts on that. Is that something the city should continue doing? I'm, I'm not quite familiar with, 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 this, with the question. Uh, I know we, are trying, we utilize all of our economic tools to try to attract businesses that would benefit of the city of Houston as a whole. Uh, that's a part of our arsenal. We want to be uh, business friendly, and at the same time, we want to receive the greatest benefit from the, econo from the benefits that we are extending to companies. Who are, what I've always said is that when companies and others are coming for, uh, to us uh, to, for, to get certain tax credits, that the city of Houston ought to be getting something in return, uh, good paying jobs, making sure that they're providing benefits that's comparable to what the city of Houston is offering itself. Uh, that the return is greater than, than the outlay, and that but for those benefits, they would not uh, be coming to this city. Those are effective tools, and I don't think you want to eliminate any of those tools from your arsenal. You can't have em employ uh, jobs if you don't have the businesses. And if you want businesses uh, that are paying good livable wages and benefits, then you have to attract them. And what I think what is important, I think the council members will agree, we don't want businesses to feel like they have a they have a um, uh, be benefited by going outside the city of Houston, by going to Sugar Land or going to the Woodlands or going to Alabama or New York. We want those businesses within the 640 square miles. So I'm not prepared to give up any tools that will attract businesses to come into our city, to remain in the city, to expand their capacity, because when they do that, jobs are created. And, and with certainly those businesses that are providing what I call uh, upper level type jobs with good benefits, that benefits every single one of us within the, within the city of Houston. We just have to be judicious on how we exercise our, uh, utilize our benefits. And, and do you feel that is happening right now, that the companies, the city is subsidizing offer quality jobs? Well, uh, let me just say any, anything that's happening on my watch, that will happen. I can't speak for yesterday, but I've been on the job now for 34, 35 days. Um, I would not be going, for example, to California, San Francisco, if I did not think it was an excellent opportunity to showcase the city of Houston and to talk about the pluses that the city has to offer with the hope of bringing businesses and others to our city that will move us to the next level. It's not about, you know, I love the football, love the game, you know, you know. Uh, but my hope is uh, in 2017, the Texans will be playing and, and the game will be right here in the city of Houston. Um, so, you know, they'll be saying, you know, Carolina, I'll be saying Houston Texans, you know. Um, but I think this is an act opportunity in going, to, for example, to San Francisco uh, to, to really talk about Houston. Uh, and we need to be in that tier, that top tier of the conversation. And uh, I don't think you can just uh, do that by just being insular. That's one of the reasons I think we, we sometimes travel all throughout the globe, because we represent Houston. And if we don't tell Houston's story, it won't be told. And we can't rely on other people to talk about Houston and Houstonians. We have to do that ourselves. Um, so that's what we're doing. That's why we're going. I'm excited about it. And, um, you know, there is no place that's better than the city of Houston. And uh, our, we represent the future of this country. When you look at the city of Houston today, you know, you are looking at the future of this country. When you look at the diversity and how we operate, you know, when you look at the potential that exists within this city, 640 square miles, the diversity that exists, uh, the institutions that are here, the port, the medical center, 
uh, Ellerton Field, Aeronautical Space Board Center. When you look at all that we have to offer, who wouldn't want to come to this city and do business and live in this city? That's a story that we have to tell, and then we have to do it with a smile. Mayor Turner, I have an unrelated question as well um, to the Super Bowl. I know you've already discussed this, but how is the city preparing for the Zika virus? We've had at least seven uh, confirmed cases in Houston. Is, there, is the city doing anything to monitor standing water, for example, in different parts? of the area. What is being done at this point? The city of Houston is leading the team. We've brought together several partners already, working with them, with medical providers, working with the county, working with the Harris County's Mosquito Control. Um, those meetings started, uh, there was an initial uh, meeting on the 29th of January. Uh, we're getting the health department for the city of Houston is getting certified to handle Zika cases. We anticipate that taking place uh, the first part of March. Um, so we are already uh, in, prep in, 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 in preparation to, for, for dealing with it, wanted to be on the front end and not on the back end. But those meetings, those uh, conversations, the, uh, the uh, preparing the protocol call, that has already started, and the city of Houston's health department is leading the way on that. Have you identified any problem areas at this point? Any areas I, don't, I won't say that they're problem areas. We certainly, you know, we certainly want to make sure that we provide information to people. We don't, you know, you don't want to have any like standing water or like old tires around your home. Uh, that's important. You want, you know, you want to re want to remove that. Uh, certain people need to be concerned about where they're traveling. You know, a lot of the cases are originated, for example, um, in Central America, and so people need to be concerned about. You know, just be careful about that. But in terms of what the city of Houston is doing, is doing, the city of Houston Health Department, along with the county, along with Harris County Flood Control, along with the pro medical providers in our city, are in direct communication right now, working in collaboration to make sure that we are on the front end of, 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 of um, to contain and prevent, rather than finding ourselves reacting after. Um, some other um, more cases are present, present themselves. So we are in the planning stages at this point. And we have been in the planning stage in the last meeting. Um, it started on the 29th of January, and then there have been several meetings since then. It's my understanding. Okay? Thank you so very much. I look forward to seeing you in California. Thanks.